I stand for the public questioning of authorities. I stand for honesty, fact-based reasoning, and debate. I oppose all censorship, including hate speech laws. I reject name-calling and insults. I am Bill Warner. Hello, I would like to talk to you about what Islam says about women. Now, Islam claims that women are honored and protected, but what are the Islamic rights of women as it comes from Islam, that is, when it comes from Quran, Sirah, and Hadith? Everything I'm going to say in this talk to you about women comes from Muhammad and the Quran, and let's start off with Muhammad, because this is pure Islam. Muhammad said to the women, O women, give alms, as I have seen that the majority of the dwellers of hell were women. They asked, Why is it so? He replied, You curse frequently and are ungrateful to your husbands. I have not seen anyone more deficient in intelligence and religion than you. The women asked, What is deficient about our intelligence and religion? He replied, Is not the evidence of two women equal to the witness of one man? They agreed. He said, This is the deficiency in her intelligence. Isn't it true that a woman can neither pray nor fast during her menstrual period? The women replied, This is so. He said, This is a deficiency in her religion. Now the Quran goes further with this inferiority and it takes two women to equal one man. Quran 2 verse 282. And call to witness from among your men two witnesses. And if two men are not available, then a man and two women can be witnesses. So that if one forgets, the other will remember. So not only does Muhammad say that women are deficient, so does the Quran. Furthermore, Muhammad goes to say that women are an affliction to men. Muhammad said, I have not left any affliction after me more harmful to men than women. Now, if we're going to talk about women, we need to talk about marriage and marriage in Islam as a contract. It's more like a business deal. The woman receives money for a dowry, and in exchange for this, the man has the privilege of nikah, sex with her. All women need to marry, but they only can marry a Muslim. Not so for the Muslim male who can marry a Christian, a Jew, or a Muslim. The rights of a woman also include being a child bride and taking part in the harem. Now this contract for marriage, Muhammad said, the stipulation of the marriage contract most entitled to be abided by are those in which you are given right to enjoy a woman's private parts. So this is part of the marriage contract, exchange for money for sex. And with regards to sex, Muhammad said, if a husband calls his wife to bed for sex and she refuses and causes him to sleep in anger, the angels will curse her till morning. Now another right of the woman in Islam is to have her genitals mutilated. Some abbreviate this to FGM, female genital mutilation. Now Muslims will tell you, oh, this is not part of Islam. Well, it is in a sideways kind of way because Muhammad was confronted with female genital mutilation and never condemned it. And we know from the Sunnah that Aisha was circumcised, which is another term for female genital mutilation. Now let's take up the dreadful subject of wife beating, which is found in the Quran and the Sunnah of Muhammad. Quran 4, verse 34, which is one of the most important verses dealing with women. Allah has made men superior to women because men spend their wealth to support them. Therefore, virtuous women are obedient, and they are to guard their unseen parts as Allah has guarded them. As for women whom you fear will rebel, admonish them first, then send them to a second bed, and then beat them. But if they're obedient after that, then do nothing further. Surely Allah is exalted and great. Now, if you have a Quran in which it says, beat them lightly, that means the Quran has been modified to take away the harshness of Islam. Now, here's enough, some more advice about beating your wife. What are the rights of a wife? Well, that you should give them food when you eat, clothe them when you clothe yourself, and do not strike her on the face, and do not revile her. So wife beating means you can beat your wife, but do not strike her in the face. Muhammad had this to say about wife beating. A man will not be asked as to why he beat his wife. Think about that. Muhammad said, None of you should flog his wife as he flogs a slave and then have sexual intercourse with her in the last part of the day. Well, I guess this is practical advice. Here's more advice about women and slaves. If you marry a woman or buy a slave, you should say, O oh Allah, I ask you for the good in her and in the disposition you have given her. I take refuge from you in the evil in her and in the disposition of her. When he buys a camel, he should take a hold of the camel's hump at the top and say exactly the same thing. Now, one of the more intriguing things that comes out of Islamic doctrine of slaves is sex slaves. 
Quran 23.1. The successful ones will be the believers who are humble in their prayers, who avoid a vain conversation, who contribute to the needy, and who abstain from sex except with their wife or slaves. More in the Quran about slavery. Quran 4, verse 24. Also are prohibited are women already married except those whom your right hand possesses. What does that mean? That means it's a captive. Now think about this. This is not just war and armies. The right hand possessing can mean it's a Kafir woman who has been subdued in the streets of London or Nashville, Tennessee. Therefore, once she's captured, you can have sex with her. We call that rape, but Islam calls it jihad. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit. I've just quoted you some verse and hadith, but let's take the big picture. I took the Quran, the Sirah, and the Hadith, and extracted every single paragraph, every sentence, and every verse that dealt with women. And I put all this material into four stacks. One stack of material is mentions women, but it doesn't say anything one way or the other. The next stack of material says women are elevated in status. Yes, they are elevated in status if they're a mother. And the other deals with equality, because you see on Judgment Day, a woman will be judged by her words and her actions, including how she was grateful to her husband and obeyed him. But this is called equality in Islam. Now then, the bad part is, is that there's another stack, which is the largest stack, which is which women are subjugated. Here's the way it breaks down. The Quran treats women better than the Sunnah of Muhammad, that is the Hadith. The high status part is 5% of the Quran verses deal with women elevated as a mother. In the equality category, 23% of the verses in the Quran that deal with women say they're equal on Judgment Day. But under the low status, which means the women are subjugated, 71% of the references to women in the Quran are subjugation. But you can take this away. Quran is kinder to women than the Sunnah of Muhammad. Now, Islam asserts that it was the first to give women their rights and that it honors women. So, some of the things that I've told you are the way that they're honored and what their rights are. Now, Muslim women will defend the Sharia because this is what we've been talking about, basically. All of these terms are incorporated in the Sharia. Muslim women will defend the Sharia and say that Islam treats women better. We go, how can they do that? Because, remember, there's the part about equality on Judgment Day and being superior as mothers. So all of these verses from the Quran and the Sunnah are pure Islam, and they're the foundation of the Sharia. Now let me explain to you why I'm not a feminist. Today, feminists, and I call them neo-feminists, will not criticize Sharia brutality or any other cultural or tribal cruelty. You see, culture trumps the suffering of Islamic women. So neo-feminists will not criticize the Sharia treatment of women. They have silence, silence in the face of evil. Now here's the irony. The more brutal the treatment of women who are not white, the more that modern-day feminists, neo-feminists, refuse to criticize them because, you see, to criticize that would be racist. Real feminism would be universal rights for women, all women without any exceptions. Now here's the big irony. Under political correctness today, those who are critical of Sharia wife beating, such as I am, are called racist, hater, bigot Islamophobes. So it's ironic. Neo-feminists will, are busy wearing hijabs and pussy hats in solidarity with the promoters of Sharia. They don't care that husbands can beat their wives under the Sharia. They don't care that the Sharia gives a woman's testimony half that of a man's. They don't care that the daughters in Sharia get half the inheritance of a son. And they also don't care that if a woman is raped, that you need four male witnesses to prove it was rape and not just common adultery. This is tragic. We're living in an upside down world. Those who tolerate evil and are silent in the face of it are called virtuous. And someone such as myself who condemns evil, well, I'm a bad person. We have the world upside down here. But take this home with you. I am not a feminist because I believe in universal women's rights. All women should be protected from harm, Muslim and Kafir. Thank you.